Hello everybody. I'm sure you've all seen these these uh, websites and YouTube videos showing you how to take an old PC power supply like this and converting it for benchtop use. Because um, they are very versatile. Uh, the label here shows all the different voltages. This one is a 145 watt and um, a lot of the videos that you see they uh, and websites they tell you how to take apart the case and and snip off the wires and uh, drill holes and add binding posts and add an LED and all this um, and that's great I did that once and uh, it works but here's the problem um, this thing's old it came out of an old computer um, and it's used and chances are it's going to give up one of these days. Uh, you know, when I subject it to the various uh, abuses of workbench uh, services that I press it into, well, uh, one day uh, 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 a rectifier or something's going to blow in there and it's going to be junk. And uh, so if I had modified it, put all the binding posts and took all the time to separate out just the right wires and so on, that's a, that, that'd be a big waste of time. So um, I came up with a better way. Actually, it's not original with me, but I have my own version of it. And it's this. I've made a couple of them. And uh, this handy device allows you to just plug in and switch on with a little switch here, a power supply. You have all your binding posts here. They're external from the power supply itself. Uh, so that when this goes bad, you just yank it off, throw away the power supply, and plug in another one, like this. Uh, this one I have powering my uh, ham radio. And uh, it works good. And uh, when if, if this power supply ever goes bad, hey, I just unplug it from here, from the cord, throw it away, or recycle it. You should uh, recycle things. There's a lot of good parts you can get out of these power supplies when, when they go bad. Plug it into the power supply box, plug it into the AC cord, turn on, away we go. Done. No messing around with modifying, putting in binding posts and LEDs. Uh, now another thing I'd like to show you about these. Um, they've, they've got the binding posts, all right. But uh, also, you probably noticed here, the light that came on, the fans started running. That's because I have a, a light bulb in here that acts as a dummy load for the power supply because a lot of these uh, are not designed to operate without a load. So, And that's one of the modifications that, that are suggested when you take these apart is you have to solder in a, uh, a 10 ohm resistor or some such thing. Well, I just forget about that. I just use a plain old, uh, it's an 1157 light bulb inside of there. Uh, and it does get a little warm for the wood, so um, I put an old CPU fan on there, and it uh, works just great. It'll operate without anything attached to it, to the binding post or anything. And you have all these, uh, these Molex connectors that I use with breadboarding, um, and I use with a variety of things. You can get the, the other, the mating... Uh, socket for these and use them in other projects and you have a, a handy uh, easily replaceable benchtop PC power supply. All right, well, I'd like to show you a little closer up uh, what's inside of these things and uh, <clears throat> get an idea of how how difficult of a project it'll be for you to build one of these. Um, they're easy to make. It's uh, a little woodworking project, which is enjoyable. I like to work with wood. It's a great material. And uh, so, get 
the screws backed out all the way here. All right. Okay, so what we got in here is uh, an auto tail light bulb. That's the 1157. It's got uh, two filaments, a bright and a dim. Uh, one for braking, one for running in automotive use. And uh, I have, as you can see, the yellow wire is going to the, the bright filament, and the red 5 volt wire goes to the. Um, or maybe I got that backwards. I think the 12 volt goes to the dim filament and the 5 volt goes to the bright. And then the ground is just soldered to the side of that. And if that ever burns out, that's easier. That, that's not hard at all to replace. Haven't had one burn out yet. Um, yeah, and then the wiring is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, all, this, all these black wires here uh, I've taken from all the ground connections in the ATX plug and run it here to the ground. Uh, the negative 12 which is a, a blue wire down in there. I think you can see that it goes to the minus 12. And all these orange wires, all the 3 volt connections from over here they go to there. Uh, and the 5 and the 12 volt. There's only, amazingly, there's only one uh, connection for the 12 volt wire, I think because the wattage isn't uh, that much in demand on a motherboard of a computer. Most of it's in the 3 volt and in the 5 volt. But you also have uh, the Molex connectors that have the 12 volt lead, so uh, a lot of the the wattage that the power supply can can give you is through the rest of these wires, not just the big motherboard connector. So you have to keep that in mind um, when it, when you when you try to power too much off of that. Uh, even though it's a might be a 500 watt power supply that you have plugged into it, uh, it doesn't mean all of that wattage can go to the motherboard connector in its original use. Um, so, but it's pretty simple inside. There's just down in there is uh, just a lot of soldering to the to the ATX socket, which is salvaged from an old motherboard. And uh, the power switch is noteworthy. Uh, it's got a ground wire running up this side, and then this green wire coming up over here. It goes to the right uh, pin in the ATX socket that signals the power supply to turn on. You can actually make these really simply if you just take a light bulb, an ATX socket, and a switch and just solder them together, but I decided to make a nice box and uh, you know it's shiny, I, I coated it with epoxy and uh, it's just you know it's just a piece of art really but it's very functional and uh, and does a great job. I made two of these. Uh, they're nearly, very nearly identical. Uh, this one here, the glossier one, is um, the second one. Uh, and this one here was the first one. They're just very nearly identical and uh, they're not hard to make. I kind of went according to the size of the components like the the ATX socket and the little fan and, and different things. And I wanted I wanted the binding post to be kind of uh, spaced out with enough space to easily turn them individually and get wires in them individually. So yeah, fun little project. <laughs>